So, ladies and gentlemen, I am recording this right now, so it could be posted later. Um, we're going to practice that essential skill of graphing with slope-intercept form equations, right? So, maybe you want to flip this paper over and jot this down in the back. Slope-intercept form is one of the most important forms when it comes to graphing linear equations. Okay? And it says y equals mx plus b. Again, the word form is the way an equation is organized, the way it looks, right? So right here we have y equals, you want the y by itself, then the equal sign, and then you want the mx. The m is simply a number, actually a fraction, and that's actually the slope. And then you have the x and then plus b. That b is another number, which is actually the y-intercept. So why do we call this slope-intercept form? Because it's organized in a way that you could see the slope right there in front of x, and you could see the y-intercept right there, which is the b-value, okay? So maybe in addition to that, you want to write the m is the slope, which is rise over run. It's a fraction, rise over run. And we're always going to look at lines from left to right, and that really means a positive direction when you're looking at the run. But the rise could be positive if it's going up, but it could also be negative if it's going down. So the fraction, it might be a positive fraction, it might be a negative fraction. If it's a positive fraction, that means you're actually rising up. If it's a negative fraction, that means you're actually rising down. But the run is always from left to right, it's always positive. Now what about that B value? That's gonna be a number that's simply the Y-intercept, okay? Um, and what does that really mean, y-intercept? It's where the line crosses y-axis. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. So again, most of us already know this because we learned this in semester one. Some of us may have forgotten it. Now you know. y equals mx plus b. That's going to be a fraction. That's the slope. It tells you how steep the lines are going to be. It's going to be the rise over the run. This number over here is the y-intercept. It tells you where it crosses uh, the y-axis. So how do we graph using slope-intercept form? You begin with the y-intercept, and then you rise and run according, uh, accordingly from that point. So let's actually go back to our worksheet here, and let's go to, let's go to number five here. Okay. Actually, let's go to number one. Number one, they even put right here, m equals what and b equals what? What does m equal? What number is in front of x? One, right? If there's no number, that means there's an invisible one right there. That's your m. Now, of course, we want it in, in terms of a fraction, in terms of rise over run. So, of course, it's going to be a one over a one. So, the slope is really up one over one. Now, your b value, y equals mx plus b, that's the value of four. The b value is four. So we know the slope, we know the y-intercept, and it's really easy to graph. You simply go to that y-intercept, the value of 4. So from the origin, here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. How do you know? Well, it tells you x. This one says y. Not only that, if they didn't tell you, y points to the sky, right? So go to the y-value of 4. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a dot right there. And again, I apologize if you're bored because you already know this stuff. And once, once again, that means that the line's going to cross right through that point. Now, it might cross like this, pretty steep up, maybe really steep going up, or maybe really steep going down, or maybe just kind of steep going down. How can you tell the steepness by the slope? The slope is steepness. And this is telling us rise over run. So you rise one, run one. So rise one, run one, put a dot right there. And you could continue to rise one, run one, and extend the line as far as you want, right? And you could also... Use that pattern of rising one, running one backwards. Run one backwards and down one. Backwards one, down one, and put a dot here. And you could continue with that pattern as far as you want to extend the line, okay? And then, of course, you draw your line going through all those points, and you put arrows on it, okay? And that's it. That's how you graph. That is the essential skill, one of the essential skills from semester one, and we definitely need to know this before we actually begin semester two. So that's why I gave you this page of review, okay? Um, but maybe before that, 
maybe before continuing on to this worksheet, let's, let's go deeper into this. So the original equation was y equals x plus 4, right? Um, and I graphed this blue line. What does this blue line actually represent? Anybody? How about this? Why, even easier, why do I put arrows right here? The line goes on forever. That's right. So what does this line actually represent? In case you forgot, it represents the infinite amount of answers that exist to an equation. And maybe this is a little bit more challenging because uh, you have two variables. But like, for example, let's say, let's say I had the equation x plus 2 equals 5. It's a single variable. There is no y, it's just x, right? x plus 2 equals 5. What's the answer to that equation? What's the answer to this equation? Is it 7? 7 plus 2, does that equal 5? No, what's the answer? 3, right? I mean, if I wanted to solve it, I'd go, okay, minus 2, minus 2, uh, x equals 3. But we already knew x equals 3, and why is the answer x equals 3? Because 3 plus 2 equals 5. You see, the answer to an equation is the value that makes it a true statement, right? It can't be 7, it can't be negative 5, it could only be the answer 3. 3 plus 2 is 5, x has to equal 3. That's pretty straightforward when you have a single variable equation. But what if you had two variables? What if you had an x and a y? Well, right here on this one, we have an x and a y, and the answer to this equation would be a value that I could plug in here and a different value here, and that would be an answer to the equation. So for example, give me a number for x, anything you want. 2. So what's 2 plus 4? 6. So an answer would be the coordinate 2 for x, because we plugged in 2 for x, and 2 plus 4 really gave us the y value of 6. So 2, 6 is an answer, correct? Now think about it. Where is 2, 6 on the xy plane? It's 2 on the x, 6 on the y. This is the location, 2, 6. Okay? 2, 6 right there. 2, comma 6. Now, is that the only answer here? No, there's an infinite amount of answers. That's what this line represents. Whenever we graph a line, we put arrows on it because it continues forever. And these coordinates is, are the infinite answers to this equation, okay? So the coordinate uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, if I plugged in 0 for x and 4 for y, it would be a true statement, right? The coordinate uh, 3, 7, plug in 3 right there, 7 right there, that'd be a true statement. Uh, 4, 8, 5, 9, uh, 10, 14, 100, and 104, right? 100 on the x, 104 on the y, it would be perfectly on that line. So the line represents the infinite amount of answers. Okay, so maybe that's a little too deep, right? But it's something that we should know from semester one, that when you graph a line, that line represents the infinite amount of answers that exist to an equation. Okay, uh, so... I'm not going to do all of them. I'm going to skip around. Let's take a look at number five. Why not? So what's my, how do I start graphing this? Anybody? The two, right? You start with the B value. The B value is two. The M value is negative three halves. So the B value is two. They even write right there B equals. And the M value is negative three halves. So we begin with the B value, the y-intercept of 2. So go to the y-axis, go to 2, put a dot right there. And from that dot, you're going to rise and run according to your slope. Now, again, remember, if it's a positive fraction, you're going to be actually rising up. If it's a negative fraction, you're going to be going a negative rise, which means you're going down. So we're going to be going down three units and always go to the right two. The bottom number, you always want it to be positive. So that negative belongs to the three. It's going down. One, two, three units, and you're going to run two to the right. One, two, and you put a dot right there, okay? Down three to the right two. So from this dot, down one, two, three, to the right two, one, two, and you put a dot right here at the location two, negative one. And you could continue to go down one, two, three, over two to the right, and put another dot right there, and you can make this as long as you want. And you could use that pattern backwards. Instead of down three over two, you could go backwards over two, up three, over two, up three, over two, up one, two, three, and put a dot right there. And of course, we're going to draw a line 
right through those dots. And of course, we're going to put arrows on it because it continues forever. And that's it. We're done. Okay. The only thing that's slightly more challenging is that your equation may not be ready to graph, kind of like uh, number seven, eight, or nine. These are in standard form. You don't really have to remember standard form. AX plus BY equals C. But you do want to rewrite it in slope intercept form and then graph it. <clears throat> so number eight, um, what would I do to make it look like a Y equals MX plus B? I want Y by itself. What would I do first? That is correct. We're going to add 3X to the other side. So we're going to go plus 3X and plus 3X. We're going to rewrite this guy. 5Y equals... Now, you do want y equals mx plus b. You want your x term first before the number at the very end. So I'm going to write the positive 3x first and then the positive 15. So I'm going to put uh, positive 3x and then the plus 15 at the very end. For my final step, I want to get y by itself. I don't want this 5 in front of there. And, of course, to get rid of something, you do the opposite. And what you do to one side, do to the other side, right? But what is happening between the 5 and the y? That's really a multiplication sign right there. It's saying 5 times y. So if you don't want the multiplication of 5, you're going to have to divide by 5, the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. That'll cancel it out. And of course, you divide everything by 5. And you end up with your y equals mx plus b equation. y equals uh, this fraction right here, 3 over 5. You can't do it, so you're just going to leave it. 3 over 5. You're going to put an x right next to it. And then plus the b value, 15 divided by Five is three so it's gonna be a plus three and now you know your M three-fifths and now you know your B which is three and you begin with the B value that Y intercept of three and then you do the rise and run according accordingly from that point so let's go to the Y intercept of three one two three put a dot there and then from there you're gonna rise and run according to your slope so you're gonna go up three one two three over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and put a dot right there. Make sure you count right. I almost messed up right now. Uh, so we could draw a line right through it and put some arrows on it, but let's say you wanted to extend it further in the other direction. Use that same pattern, but backwards. Up 3 over 5, go over 5 this way, down 3. Go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 1, 2, 3. It'll be on the x-axis right there and then extend it further in this direction. And that's it. That's as hard as it gets. Actually, there's some that are easier, but you might get confused with those easier ones. For example, uh, some people will say, well, how the heck do I do number three? It's really the same thing. What is your B value? Your B value is a number that's being added at the very end or subtracted, and there is no number being added. So you could put a plus zero. So the B value is zero. And what's your slope? It's the number in front of x. In this case, a negative 1 over 1. So you would cross at 0, and you go up 1 over 1. And you could keep going with that pattern. You could go with that pattern backwards and draw your line with arrows on it, right? Here's another one that's ridiculously easy. Um, but a lot of people get confused. They're like, how do I graph that one? Well, how do we graph this one? Could we use y equals mx plus b? Yes, technically we can because there's a y. So y equals mx. Is there an mx? No. So technically there is no m value. So if you wanted to, you could say y equals, there is no m value in front of an x. So I could put 0x. That means that there is no x's. And then a minus 4 at the very end. So your slope is 0 and your y-intercept is negative 4. So that would cross at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, cross the y-axis at negative 4. And being that it has a zero slope, that means that it's not steep at all. It's totally flat like the floor. So that would be this totally flat line, horizontal, running left to right, right through that y value. Okay. Uh, another way of logically thinking through this equation and graphing it is a line is really a, a bunch of coordinates right, that are collinear. A bunch of xy values, a bunch of coordinates. And the only thing that this equation here cares about is that your y values are negative 4. So on your y values, you could put negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. And for your x values, you could put whatever you want, like 0, like negative 1, like positive 2, whatever you want. And if you start going to those coordinates, 0, negative 4, 0, negative 4, it's going to give you that red dot. 
If you go to the coordinate, negative 1, negative 4, negative 1, negative 4, it's going to give you that dot right there. If you go to the coordinate uh, 2, negative 4, 2 on the x, negative 4 on the y, it's going to give you that dot right there. And obviously, it gives you that same horizontal line. Okay? And the absolute fastest way of graphing this, whenever you have a single letter equaling a single number, you go to the y-axis, you go to the, the value of negative 4, and you draw a horizontal line right through it. Now, if it were an x equals a negative 4, you go to the x-axis, you go to that value of negative 4, and you draw a vertical line right through it. So if it's x equals a number, that'll give you a vertical line. If it's y equals a number, it's going to give you a horizontal line. As a matter of fact, we do have a vertical line over here, number 6, x equals 2. You can't even think of this in y equals mx plus b because there is no y. It's just x equals. So think about it. You want a bunch of coordinates that have the x value of 2. And what about the y values? Who cares? You could put whatever you want. 0, 1, 3, whatever. So if you go to the coordinate uh, 2, 0, 2, 0 is right there. If you go to the coordinate 2, 1, 2 on the x, 1 on the y, it'd be a vertical dot right there. 2, 3 would be up there. So as you can see, this is a vertical line passing right through the x value of 2. So you don't even have to actually write out these coordinates. The reality is when you have a single x equaling a number, you go to the x-axis, you go to that number 2, and you draw a vertical line right through it. If it's y equals a number, you go to the y-axis, you go to that number, negative 4, here's a y-axis, go to negative 4, draw a horizontal line right through it. That's the quickest way of doing it. Anyway, I think I've made this review a little bit too long. There's only uh, one, two, three more questions for you to do. Please get that done, and then tape that in your notebook, and that's it for today.